Welcome to this discussion on the novel food experience with Kat Dillon. My name is Elise Ekman and I am on the Access Elite team that has brought this event to you today. For those of you who aren't familiar, Access Elite is a health and wellness company that provides on-demand wellness content, same-day prescription delivery, and facilitates live virtual events such as these that you can tune into every day as well as much more. We are so glad that we can facilitate this event and bring some positivity and connection to your day. So I just wanna thank each of you for being here. And with that, I am thrilled to introduce our guest today. We have Kat Dillon, who is a registered holistic nutritionist and chef, and she is gonna be leading our discussion. Kat? Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I am so honored to be here. I think what Access Elite is doing is amazing. Um, man, it's just so needed right now and just, it's so easy. You make it so easy for people to get access, hence Access Elite, right? Um, so yeah, I'm a holistic nutritionist. My name is Kat Dillon. I do a lot of different things. Um, one in particular deep um, concept and, and passion of mine really is the food. The food is medicine. Food is our first line of defense and offense and really uh, understanding um, our, in, our intuitive uh, nature. Um, we've kind of lost it, right? And uh, we really, really want to just tune in to our inner wisdom to really find out um, what it is that we truly need when it comes to food, sleep, um, anything around our, our health uh, that's really, really important. Um, so thank you for showing up today. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, 10 ingredients that I use um, in my eating that can really just get you, um, well, for one, all of these foods are incredibly anti-inflammatory. Um, they are very low glycemic, super high in polyphenols with all these beautiful antioxidants and, and phytonutrients that I'm going to teach you about. So it's really, really, um, just really optimizing your diet, right? Um, rather than really, you know, worrying and considering all of the things like the macronutrients and things like that, we're just really adding some beautiful colors, fibers for microbiome health, um, and just really enjoyment with color, texture, and vibrancy and deliciousness that can make everything entertaining and, and, um, and interesting for you. So, um, so I'll start with, um, you know, just a few things. I'm going to talk to you briefly about a little bit about, um, you know, where the food comes from, and then hopefully you'll have a pad of paper and a pen to take notes on, um, you know, ways to use it, because there's no reason for me to tell you this if you're not going to use it. So I'm about easy and, and um, um, just making things so that you're going to use them. All right, so let's start. Gosh, it's amazing that I can actually smell what I'm about to, to show you through the bag. And it's, it's also something to note that our sense, our sense of smell is actually the fastest sense to our brain. People always think it's, oh, you know, if I um, taste something or if I whatever, it's actually the nose, the nose knows, right? So just know that, um, especially, you know, when you're, working with yourself, let's say you're experiencing some sort of um, sadness or um, fear right now, um, a really kind of a fun thing to look at is um, the value and the potency of essential oils for mood. And um, hopefully one of these days I'll do a, a show on, on that for you guys. Uh, but so um, goji berries, a lot of you know about goji berries. I know we don't have it on on mirror here, but um, goji berries, a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's pretty trendy out there, but we want to know why. Like, why is it that people are using it? Well, and there's so many things to do with it. Well, goji berries, the color red is phenomenal. Reds and purples and blues, specifically those reds, but the reds um, really benefit eye health due to the high levels of something called zeaxanthin. It's also really high in um, vitamin A and vitamin C for immune support throughout these days. Um, really, really definitely want to just be consuming like crazy vitamin C rich foods. Um, the beta carotene that converts into vitamin A too is incredibly important for skin health. 
All right, so the other thing about um, goji berries, even though they're uh, a dried fruit, they're still pretty low glycemic, although you don't wanna eat the whole bag, but it's not as um, quick to raise your blood sugar and your insulin levels, right? So it's, um, it's said that these goji berries can actually help with mood and sleep. We also know about that, the tart cherries. I don't know if anyone knows about tart cherry extract that can really help with sleep as well as inflammation. So those are really good things. And they're both red, right? Um, so studies in traditional Chinese medicine show management of liver health as well as preventing the progression of fatty liver disease. So lots of interesting research on goji berries. Um, I find that they really stick to your teeth. So keep that in mind when you do use them. Um, I like to soak them a little bit and make a little goji berry tea. That's very, that's like a traditional thing in, in um, Chinese medicine, they drink the goji berry tea. But you can also use them in things like, um, I make a really good coconut muffin. So you can take your coconut muffin recipe instead of using whatever you do to mix it in there, or like you know, maybe mixing a fruit, add goji berries. I love, in the last, I think it was last week or the week before, we did um, a matcha class. So what I will do is I'll make a, an iced matcha with the kind of milk that I like. Let's say it's oat milk or if you're using almond milk, that's phenomenal. I'll shake it in one of those um, bar shaker glasses or blend it. Um, and then I'll add some cacao nibs as well as um, a couple of pinches of the goji berries. And then... Um, I sip that along. It's almost like, do you remember um, remember bubble tea when that first came out? People were going crazy when that first came out until we found out how much sugar is in those, right? So, um, so I'll make my own bubble tea without the big straw, and I'll add these goji berries, and it's super delicious. Really, really great. Um, they're also really high in fiber, so that's always good. Super rich in vitamin A, as I said. Um, and again, vitamin A and vitamin C are really good for our immune system. So real, real good one to have. Um, anything else I can tell you? Well, if you do, if you like um, using seaweed, like hijiki seaweed, it's not a big, um, a lot of people don't really know too much about how to use seaweeds, but they're delicious. And I'm going to be talking to you about one of the seaweeds I like to use, but I'll make um, like a wakame or hijiki um, salad and I'll throw in some of those goji berries and it's amazing. You can soak them if you want um, a different texture and then just toss them in a salad. Really simple. That's always nice. But I kind of like, the, they're kind of um, chewy like a raisin, yet they're sort of crunchy like a nut or a seed. So it's kind of a really funky texture. So yeah. So again, good for your skin around the spring and summertime in, in Southern California with that beta carotene, very protective over the sun rays. Um, so another one of my favorites, and I'm not sure if you know about it, but um, it's called black rice, forbidden rice. It's really, really good. Super, super high fiber. There's about well, I mean, it's not like through the roof, like a, let's say flax or anything, but for a rice, it's about four grams per serving. So about a quarter cup of raw rice, there's about four grams. Um, really good. And remember when I told you, I was going to talk about color and the value of color, these phytochemicals that are real, these plant pigments that actually um, are beneficial for certain areas of your body. Okay. So one of my favorite ones to talk about are the blue and purple group of foods called anthocyanins. So there's lots of real big benefits to anthocyanins. One is for brain health and memory, and cognition, all of those. And anything that you talk about that's good for your brain is also good for your heart. No matter what age anyone's at, this is really important stuff. And we're all experiencing, like, look at the stressors that we've had in the last five, 10 years, um, all of us have been through things like 9-11, fires, um, floods, hurricanes, whatever, family stuff. And then we, we add on top of that our jobs and different things in life. And now we have this, right? So this is, you know, part of managing stress, of course, is, you know, good sleep and um, social contacting and, and things like, not physical, physical, but non-physical, but social, right? Um, 
but the food that we eat, right? We want to make sure it's as nourishing as possible and also targeting. And this is where I like to, to draw in something called personalized nutrition. You know, we always hear about what's good and what's bad and what we should be eating, but is it right for you? Right? So um, let's say there are issues in your family with, with Alzheimer's or um, dementia. Well, maybe it's something that you want to pay close attention to. Our genes don't determine our destiny. However, um, it's something to pay attention to and optimize those blue and purple foods. Right? So, um, so I hope that was interesting. Oh, so, so the purple rice, we call it purple rice, black rice or forbidden rice. It's really nice. It doesn't take that long to cook it. I think I've been cooking it about 20 minutes. Um, 20 to 30 minutes, one cup of rice yields three cups of cooked rice. And um, I like it. It's a real nice contrast to, to foods like um, lighter foods. So if you put something like a piece of white fish and white king oyster mushrooms, or um, you know, if you're doing something with red peppers and you saute some red peppers and yellow peppers and let's say some shrimp, um, barbecuing things and it's just a beautiful contrast using that um, the other parts you know we talked about that the fiber and the other compounds the flavonoids and the carotenoids those are all plant chemicals that are phenomenal for uh, burst boosting inflammation uh, boosting um, oxidative or antioxidative properties anti-cancer things like that so very anti-inflammatory and research also is showing that the black rice also has lutein and lutein and zeaxanthin. These are really important for eye health. There's tons and tons of companies now that are isolating this stuff and putting them into capsules for people with things like cataracts or macular degeneration. So if you know anyone in your family um, that has, you know, maybe has had cataract surgery or, you know, has... Um, even things like dry eyes, um, you might want to direct them to, to using things like, like this, right? Um, so it, that a lot of the stuff that has the zeaxanthin, um, salmon, salmon would have zeaxanthin, uh, shrimp, and that pink kind of red pigment in there is what, they, um, what that zeaxanthin is, right? So you see that in like lobster and shrimp and things like that. So those are all really, really good. Okay, uh, one of my absolute favorites, cacao nibs. Oh my God. So these are little pieces of the, the cocoa bean. Um, and these ones, these, the, the reason for the beauty of these cacao nibs is that they're fermented, right? They are um, fermented first. It's talking about smell. My gosh, it smells so good. They're fermented and dried before they're roasted and cracked really, really low temperature. Um, the, the high protective antioxidants in here are called polyphenols. They're anti-inflammatory. They also have catechins. Catechins are also in tea, like green tea. Um, they also have anthocyanins. Remember we were talking about that dark blue, dark blue and purple color? It's also in this stuff. So it's super important um, to be aware of the, uh, the amounts of colors, really getting uh, lots of variety of color. You don't even have to remember that the terms that I'm, I'm talking to you about, as long as you remember this is a variety of color. And last week I had a really fun thing. Uh, for two weeks, we did a, um, a color challenge on my uh, Facebook page, and we were trying to get um, five colors in each meal, as well as 50 novel foods. So it would be like, um, you could use cacao bean, cacao nibs, uh, maybe you would use goji berries. You just count all the, the, the name or the, the, the whatever you're using, and at the end of the week, actually five days, you, um, you can only count one food one time and it's all plant foods. Um, not against animal foods at all, but it's just we're trying to optimize the plant foods. So it's really fun and everybody took pictures and stuff like that. Really good stuff. So um, what else do I wanna tell you about uh, this chocolate? So the, the nice thing about this chocolate is the bitterness and that bitter compounds, right? Bitter really, if, if, we, if you think about one thing that bitters and bitter compounds do in your body, they actually stimulate bile acids from that gallbladder and the liver that help break down the fats in your body. 
So that's really good. Dark chocolate, as you know, um, it has a huge effect on blood pressure, your, your lipid um, numbers, your glucose levels, and is incredibly anti-inflammatory. And it also is a big mood food, right? I mean, what do we do, right? That when we're kind of feeling blue, everybody wants chocolate or menstrual cycles, people want chocolate. And why is that? Well, chocolate has an incredible amount of magnesium and magnesium can help to relax us, make us feel more calm. Um, and also it can actually, actually make us feel at the same time more productive and more engaged, right? So there is something called um, theobroma, theobroma cacao. So that's, that's actually where the cacao comes from. It's a tree. And it actually means food of the gods, the theobroma. So um, it's actually a, I think there's a chocolate place somewhere in the States that is called that, called theobroma. It's a good and handy name. So what do I use it in? Oh, my God, I use it in smoothies at the last minute, or I'll um, put it in and I'll blend it in there so it kind of gets sort of like, um, um, like you're putting cookies in something. Do you know what I mean? If you blend it, it just, it's really nice. It can, gives it some thickness. Um, I make, um, I'll take something that I'm gonna tell you about in a minute here. I'll just give you a little bit of a preview, but this raw coconut butter, it's, um, it's also called uh, coconut mana. I'll just melt it down and add some of that cacao nibs and just put them in a little, either a mold or it could be a dish, it could be anything, and put it back in the refrigerator. And you have a, literally an unsweetened truffle that will blow your socks off without any sugar, high fiber, super satisfying, and really, really healthy, healthy fats for you. It's vegan, paleo, keto, I mean, it's really good stuff. Um, so yeah, so love that. Um, oh, so I'll tell you about while I'm here with the coconut mana, there's lots and lots of benefic beneficial here of the mana. So what I love about it is not only the flavor and the texture, it's really something incredible about it. It's very antibacterial. There's something in it called lauric acid, and it's actually known to treat viral infections such as the flu, the cold, cold sores, um, um, like herpes simplex. Uh, it can even fight bronchitis, uh, yeast infections, candida. This is what I have like a lot of people taking when they're on it, like a candida, anti-candida protocol. And it's so delicious too. Um, if you're not already doing so, you can take um, not the butter, but the, the oil and like take a teaspoon and swish it in your mouth after you brush your teeth for about five minutes. It's like a mouthwash that is incredibly antibacterial without tasting disgusting and not being like, you know, those ugly blue, well, pretty blue colors, right? That are totally unnatural and strip all the bacteria away. This is going to take the, keep the good bacteria in there, but just get you, your, just the harmful bacteria out. So the other thing about it is that it's really high in something called medium chain fatty acids, MCT oil, which are really, really easy for the body to digest. Okay. They also help to boost your natural production of ketones in your body, right? And ketones help your body use fat for fuel. It's also great. It's very anti-inflammatory. It's really high in fiber. Let's see, there's um, three grams of fiber in it, and um, it just tastes amazing. Be careful when you eat too much of it, though, because it can, it can give you a stomach ache. <laughs> um, it is... Is very, it's the saturated fat, half saturated fat. Um, and yes, saturated fat is good, but in my opinion, we don't want to over consume it, right? There are people out there telling you that saturated fats, you know, the be all end all you need to eat. Like if you're, let's say keto and yes, keto works, totally works, but keto is not designed to be a, a day in and day out diet. For anybody. It's a therapeutic diet. It works great for weight loss and it works great for neurodegenerative uh, disease and um, lots of things, but it's not um, designed to be 100% on at all days of the week, every day of your life. So just know that. Um, but yeah, um, a good amount of variety with your fats can be really helpful. Lots of omega-3 fatty acids, fats, let's say high in, in 
seafood, fish, avocados, nuts and seeds, things like that. Um, uh, and of course, some butter and coconut oil is fine, but I wouldn't have that for every, every meal that you prepare. Okay, so, um, oh, one of my favorites is this thing called dulce. I was talking about seaweed and sea vegetables. Really, really yummy. It, it does smell like the sea, so hopefully if you're, you know, maybe it, maybe if you're not so used to it, it may take a little bit of a while to get used to it, but there are lots of things that you should know about dulce and all other seaweeds, but dulce in particular is easy to use because you could eat it like literally out of the bag or just put it in an oven for like maybe three to five minutes and toast it up. Conversely, you can put a saute pan or a skillet on your um, stovetop, put a little oil in there and then just kind of move it around a little bit and toast it that way. That's also really, really good. But so Jules, I, I did some research on Jules because I really didn't know like where, I mean, I knew that it was very Asian, but I wanted to know more. But records from about uh, I think it's like 500 AD. They say they said that Christian monks in Ireland and Scotland were regularly eating it. So um, I knew also that it, it was popular in Scotland. I just didn't know like when and how they, they got it. But the, the company that I love is called Oceans Balance and it's from Maine. Um, it's really good. They, um, they have this one in already in flakes so that you could use it right on top of your food. It's really easy to use. Um, you can also use it with like lemon zest. That would be good. I put it on fish. You can crust things. It's really fun. I put it on salads, soups, miso soup. It would be great. Really, really good. So uh, just one serving of it provides a ton of uh, iodine, iron, potassium, calcium, all these minerals like magnesium. You do want to watch out if you have hyper or hypothyroid you want to be careful of how much you, you eat. It does benefit the thyroid with, that, um, with the iodine in it, for sure. But if you overdo it, it can cause some problems. It can cause you to go hyper and hyper, you know, it, it may mess you up. But, um, but I have not had any problems with anyone and their thyroid. Um, so it's really also rich in, in B12, which for vegans, that's important. Um, Omega-3s. Uh, the, a good ratio of omega-3 and omega-6s to regulate arthritis and blood pressure, um, your brain, your nervous system. Ironically, I never really knew this, but I read that there's 20 grams of protein in a serving of, of this. So when you're using the flakes, it's really hard to um, you know, get that much. Right? But if you're eating like a half a bag of it, you could more than likely get it. I uh, found a company in Oregon that's making, um, and I'm going to figure out how they do it, make it myself, but they're making um, bacon bits with the dull flakes. It's really good. So um, really, really good. Um, it also has a lot of fiber. So you want to keep that in mind. Okay, one other one here, speaking of fiber and something called inulin, which is a fiber that really is healthy and helps your gut bacteria, feeds a good gut bacteria, it plays a role in inflammation, um, improving the bacterial colonies in your lower intestine, and it also helps with blood, blood sugar control. It's just dandelion coffee. It's just an instant, it's made out of um, dandelion, and you put a scoop in your water, or you can make it like a latte style, and it's delicious. You can also put it in your smoothies. It's fantastic. I love it, um, and it's just one of the best things. Inulin in your diet is really important for the growth of good bacteria, and inulin is really rich in, in something called yacon, yacon syrup. Do you remember using um, agave? Well, I don't use agave anymore because agave, it, it does, um, doesn't raise your blood sugar that much, but it's super, it'll skyrocket your insulin levels. So don't use that stuff anymore. It's bad. Use this instead, yacon syrup. And it's made from this tuber um, that they have done uh, tons of research on yacon and it's actually really good um, for many of the reasons that I talked to you about earlier. Um, it's, um, it's got a lot of soluble dietary fiber. It has, um, um, something called FOS. So if you do have a gut issue, you want to be careful and not eat this if you've got like IBS or something like that. But um, this um, fiber can really, really tamper down your, um, your hunger levels, 
Uh, it's sweet. It's very satisfying without being overly sweet. And um, it, it really, I mean, even on the label, it's, it's, there's so much low glycemic responsible for um, uh, the conversion of your, your fats. So this stuff is incredible. I really, really love it. Um, so it, it's just not digested like sugar, right? With all this, um, the fructans in it. Love it. Um, as with anything, if you're trying to lower your sweet, um, do be careful. It's still sweet. And if you're, you're just using this on, instead of sugar and using tons of it, it's something that you want to be careful of. Um, okay, getting close here. Um, okay, maki berry. I, I'm not sure if I even talked about this yet. This is so much. Loaded with antioxidants, can risk your, um, can lower your risk of inflammation. Tons of good uh, stuff with the fibers in this. Uh, it also, because of the color, there is lots of anthocyanins. I'm really going crazy with the purples and blues, aren't I? But um, this also can help alleviate symptoms of dry eye, right? Um, it's a, lot, a very, very anti-aging berry. As with all berries, berries are really rich in vitamins A and vitamin C and antioxidants. Bees, uh, it, it's got the highest antioxidant content of any fruit. And what I do is I'll mix it in, in smoothies. I'll put it, uh, I'll make little yogurt parfaits. Um, I will put them in the little mixture that I make with the coconut and I'll do that. Um, I've actually made salad dressings with it, believe it or not, purple salad dressings. It's really fun and um, it's delicious. You can make um, like acai bowls and instead of acai, you can use maki berry. It's not cheap at all, like acai is not cheap, uh, but it's really, really nice. You can also make um, ice cream from it, just taking like frozen bananas and mixing some coconut with it and mixing um, some of this maki berry fruit. So lots of stuff to do. Lots and lots. Um, okay, I think, where did I stop? Oh, okay, Ceylon cinnamon. I just, I forgot that in my stash. It's back there, but I won't get that. So Ceylon cinnamon, the reason, cinnamon in general, cinnamon's fabulous. And, see, and Ceylon has the most research. There's two different types of cinnamon. There's a cassia, which is the, I guess it's the inner bark, and then the, the Ceylon. But the Ceylon is known as the true cinnamon. It comes from, again, the bark of the tropical cinnamon tree grown in like Sri Lanka or Southern India. It is amazing because it can actually help regulate blood sugar. So if you have, um, you know, you want to support your blood sugar, it's a great thing. It also is very anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antibacterial, uh, boosts brain function. It's an incredible, incredible resource I've been using for a long time. Um, about, uh, because it's antibacterial, it also uh, can be used as a natural food pro uh, uh, preserver. So that's really good. Um, the smell is amazing. Um, the, the serving size per day to get any kind of effect is about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. The other thing that I like to do with it is I will, um, I'll mix it um, with tahini in the morning. Uh, and I love to get this raw tahini, but I think it's called Living Foods. It's in the refrigerator at Jimbo's. You can probably get it at any Whole Foods. And it's beautiful. I'll mix some of the um, cinnamon in there, and I'll also mix it with a, just a touch of the yacon, and I'll put it on um, like a half of a green-tipped banana. The green-tipped bananas aren't as sweet, and they're really high in the, the inulin again. They've got a lot of good fibers in there for us. So I'll put that and spoon that on there. And man, I'm just energized for a, like a good hour, you know, for if I'm not doing a fasted workout. And it's delicious. It's just really, really delicious. Um, so I've got, let's see, I've got a couple more, but I'm gonna, um, sh I'm gonna just put it on the, um, information sheet that I'm going to give Elise here. Just, um, just real briefly, uh, one is a, a, the dried mulberries, which are great. Um, so I love using dried mulberries, kind of like I do um, the goji berries. And there's a compound in there um, that uh, are thought to inhibit sugar digestion, so that more of the sh most of the sugar is not even absorbed. Um, and it's really, really high in fiber. Um, I, I throw them on top of smoothie bowls or acai bowls and things like that. Um, I don't use a lot of them because, um, you know, they tend to be, they're, as, as far as a dried fruit, they're very low in sugar, but they still are dry, uh, but they're delicious. And then 
The last thing I was going to um, discuss was vanilla bean. Uh, and there are tons of antioxidants in, in vanilla bean. Very, very, um, been extensive research on anti-tumor qualities of the, the vanillin. It has a really nice application um, that were used in, in cancer studies that they've found um, have been very beneficial. Uh, very antibacterial. So um, there's a lot of studies. And one I pulled up, I found uh, in 2014 in the Journal of, of Molecules, uh, they have published research showing that when the vanilla essential oils was applied to medical devices, it inhibited the growth of specific bacterial cells. Uh, found that fascinating. Um, and also there's a lot of research on vanilla oil uh, to help reduce anxiety and depression. So hope that was interesting to you all. And um, yeah, so lots of fun stuff here that I'll have to put back into my cabinets. And I hope I gave you some creative ideas. You know, using um, creativity in your kitchen can really help you, um, you know, be creative in your lives. And I think that's a really important time, especially right now, um, because we don't want to get stuck in the rut, stuck in the thought rots. You know, add some color and add some diversity to the palette, and that will help to add diversity to your brain. So I hope that helps you. And um, uh, I will see you next week to talk about more stuff. Thank you so much, Kat. That Thanks, please. Yeah, that was very informative and so interesting. I'm so glad to know some of these things. Awesome. Um, Thanks, if anybody Kate. has any questions, please feel free. Uh, now is your time to go ahead and ask. Um, Brittany, it looks like you might have one. Don't be shy, you guys. So what's the big difference um, between just like regular cinnamon and Ceylon cinnamon? Good question. Well, the Ceylon has um, just a little bit more of the, the anti-inflammatory properties that they've studied. But I will say that the cassia cinnamon used, um, when they've compared it, both of them, they found that cassia can actually cause, um, in some people, over a long-term um, of use, some liver damage. So they found that the Ceylon did, uh, did not demonstrate any damaging effects. So it's a safer um, and more pure one to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's really different. Um, and I have read that the cinnamon actually has more antioxidants than garlic and onions. So wow. yeah, super good. And it's, it's actually a little bit more um, it's, it has a little bit more of a low note compared to like the regular Saigon cinnamon, which has got a more of a high note. It's a little bit different, but I really, I really enjoy it. I love cinnamon. I'm a cinnamon person. You know, some people are like, they like the smell of chocolate or something. Give me cinnamon on anything and I will smile. Especially cinnamon rolls. They're so oh. good. Yeah. Well, being allergic to nuts, I'm not able to eat any of that kind of stuff, but I do enjoy them. Like if I walk by a bakery, it smells so good. Yeah. Yeah. I make my own from scratch a lot. Oh, wow. That's yeah. impressive. How to use the vanilla bean, Jay Daly. Yeah. So vanilla bean, you know how it comes into a pod. Um, you scrape it out right? You scrape it out and you could add it to anything. Um, smoothies, you could add it to, um, what I would do is I would add some to the raw coconut butter. That would be amazing. Vanilla and coconut. Oh my God. And then pour them into little candy molds. Um, the other thing you could do is add, you know, add that vanilla to, um, coconut butter and use it as a spread. So that could be like, it almost looks, it is the same texture. Um, you know, after it's melted down a little bit and then cooled a little bit, it will have the same texture as, um, you know, like carrot cake topping, the, 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 what do you call it? The um, spread on the carrot, the frosting on the carrot cake. That's what it's like. Yeah. And then also using the vanilla bean in, in just like you would use the extract in um, muffin recipes, pancake recipes, things like that. Mm-hmm. You guys are making me hungry. <laughs> me too, Kat. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you. And Kat, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and information. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Um, if you guys love this session, be sure to stay tuned to accesseliteNow.com slash events. Um, we do have another upcoming session with Kat uh, next week on the 21st at noon, and we are going to be discussing mood and food. Um, so that should be a good one. You guys can register for that at the website, which I typed into the chat. Um, and of course, you can book your private sessions with Kat through the Access Elite app. And I know that she is currently hosting a summit right now that she would like to share. Um, and that is at innerwisdomeating.com. And it is a brain gut connection. Did I say that right? Brain heart gut connection. Heart gut. Okay. <laughs> um, so you can check that out at her website, innerwisdomeating.com. Awesome. Thank Yay. you so much, everybody. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Kat.